I'm Jess from Musicals with Cheese, and today we're going to count down the top five Stephen Sondheim patter songs. I can hear your voice through the computer now, curious asker. Jess, what's a patter song? I've never heard of such a thing. A patter song is a moderately fast to fast tempo song with a rapid succession of rhythmic patterns in which each syllable of text corresponds to one note. If I'm being honest, it was all very harrowing when the invite came for an evening of caroling. It's a staple of comic operas, especially the works of Gilbert and Sullivan. If you've heard the modern major general song, you know what a patter song is. I am the very model of a modern major general, live information vegetable animal. But if you want more modern examples of what a patter song is that goes outside of, you know, operas that are over 100 years ago, take a look at Danny Elfman's work in The Nightmare Before Christmas. What's this? What's this? There's color everywhere. What's this? Or Lynn manuel Miranda's work in Encanto or Moana or Hamilton. Or Stephen Schwartz's work in things like Godspell. Some men are born to live at ease, doing what they please, richer than the bees are in honey. But I'd say the king of patter songs, especially in the 20th century, was Mr. Stephen Sondheim. May he rest in peace. Sondheim wrote a lot of great patter songs, and some of the most iconic songs in his work are patter songs. This is my list of the top five favorite Sondheim patter songs, and if you have a song that didn't make the list or one that you think should be higher, let me know. Give me your list. So let's dive into my top five and see what we've got here. As it was five years ago. So at number five, we have The Worst Pies in London from Sweeney Todd. What, what you rush, what you hurry? You gave me such a fright. I thought you was a ghost half a minute. Can't you sit, sit you down, sit? All I meant is that I haven't seen a customer for weeks. In this very short song, that's also a very good introduction to a lead character, you get both her energy, her ability as a cook and chef, as well as her relationship and dichotomy with our lead character, Sweeney Todd. She's this big chatterbox that just won't shut up, where Sweeney Todd's voice is much more... Sullen, slow, methodical. Mr. Todd, sir. You are young. Life has been kind to you. It's a great song that shows a great character very well. On top of that, it's also just a bop. It's got some of Stephen Sondheim's best lyrics, some of his most funny work, and the best part is, by the time you can really take in some of his great lyricism, we're already on to five more clever lyrics. This is also a very, very difficult song to sing. There's barely any place to breathe. It's, it's very difficult to breathe here. I know, I know. He hasn't left a lot of room. He hasn't left a lot of room for breath, has he? It's a song that keeps on giving from the beginning to the end. One of my favorite lyrics in the song has to be close to the end where it's Mrs. Mooney has a pie shop, does a business but I notice something weird. Lately all her neighbor's cats have disappeared. Have to hand it to her, what I call enterprise, poppin' pussies and the pies. All the rhymes there. Incredible. After all that being said, I'm sure you're shocked to hear there's four more songs above it. What's coming up next? Wanna send me Number four is Now from A Little Night Music. While Petra was brushing my hair. Now there are two possibilities. A, I could ravish her. B, I could nap. It's just that grumpy old Mrs. Nordstrom from next door. Her sister's coming for a visit. Say, it's the ravishment. Then we see the option that follows, of course. Now this song is a little different from the others. It's part of a three-part trilogy of Now, Later, Soon. So the song Now is about a man named Frederick Agerman who's frustrated that he can't have sex with his 18-year-old wife. I, I know it's creepy, but the show is self-aware of it. This song has lyrics coming at you so quick that you can't even tell how clever it is until you break down the lyrics word by word, stanza by stanza. This is one of Sondheim's best musicals, and the fact that it's all done in 3-4 time because of Sondheim's self-imposed restrictions really, really sells it all as a really effective waltz. Also, whenever you get a performer that's really, really selling it, the comedy always lands, and it's just a fun, fun song. There's not much more to say. This song's really funny, the rhyme schemes are very effective, and go listen to it. If you haven't watched a little night music yet, what are you waiting for? Go check that out, too. And three, and most importantly... At number three, we have Putting It Together from Sunday in the Park with George. Putting it together. Family is all you have. Piece by piece. Only way to make a work of art. Every moment makes a contribution. Every little detail plays a part. Having divisions, no solution. Everything depends on execution. Putting it together, that's what counts. Mandy Patinkin. His voice was made for patter songs. This is about George Surratt's great-great-grandson, 
who now has to show off his chroma loom, which is this big machine with a lot of flashing lights, to try to be able to build another one. And he has to listen to all these people giving advice, giving ideas, suggesting things, being jealous of him. It is a song about the art of making art, so to say. It's one of the best songs in the entire show, and Mandy Patinkin really sells it. This also has become one of Sondheim's more popular songs, being covered by folks like Barbara Streisand. Together, bit by bit. Do we really need all these musicians? As well, he created a new stage-centered variation of it for his review, Putting It Together, which is also very good. This is such an effective song that can be applied to any industry that you work on, and it's just so universal. As well, the rhymes are just so good and so great, and it's a tour de force to watch any performer put it on. Highly recommended. It takes two. For number two, we have Not Getting Married Today from Company. Pardon me, is everybody there? Because if everybody's there, I want to thank you all for coming to the wedding. I'd appreciate your going even more. I mean, you must have lots of better things to do and not a word of it to Paul. Remember, Paul, you know the man I'm gonna marry, but I'm not because I wouldn't ruin anyone as wonderful as he is. But I thank you all for the gifts and the flowers. Thank you all. Now it's back to the showers. Don't tell Paul, but I'm not getting married today. This song is probably one of the funniest songs Sondheim's ever written. Every lyric is so effective in its two-handed nature, as well as just dark and mean and sadistic in a way that you were not really used to seeing in musicals at the time. So the song is about a character named Amy, who is afraid to marry their husband Paul. In more recent production on Broadway, Amy is renamed to Jamie because it's gender-bent. Pretty interesting. Like that show a lot. And Amy Jamie has some cold feet about the wedding. Listen, everybody, look, I don't know what you're waiting for. A wedding? What's a wedding? It's a prehistoric ritual where everybody promises fidelity forever, which is maybe the most horrifying word I ever heard, and which is followed by a honeymoon where suddenly he'll realize he's saddled with a nut and want to kill me, which he should. Thanks a bunch, but I'm not getting married. Go have lunch, because I'm not getting married. You've been grand, but I'm not getting married. Don't just stand there. I'm not getting married. And don't tell Paul, but I'm not getting married today. Their anxiety piling and piling up as the moments draw close and closer, and the lyrics get more and more desperate, to the point of like suicide and other demented ideas. This is one of Sondheim's best patter songs ever written. It's truly one of the most effective scenes, and one of the best songs ever written. If you want more on Sondheim's interpretation of the song, you should really check out this video, where he has a masterclass with three college students, and teaches them the song, and mentors them through every note and every word. It is so, so good to watch him mentor young people, and it really shows you what a genius he was. Listen, everybody, look, I don't know what you're waiting for a wedding. What's a wedding? It's a prehistoric ritual where everybody promises fidelity forever, which okay, is maybe the most powerful. Now, what you want, maybe just, uh, I would know we're not staging this, but what you might do is just before you start that, you might take a little step forward and take them into your confidence so that he doesn't hear you and she, little, she doesn't hear you. Yeah. See, listen, it's, it's go, go away, go away. Just take between them into your confidence. Exactly, exactly. This song's great, but there is one more that beats it. Before we move on to number one, let's look at these honorable mentions. Can we see each other Tuesday if it doesn't rain? Look, I'll call you in the morning when my sound is full of smoke. Have a dish, have a fork, have a fish, have a pork. Put your feet up, feel at home. Have a smoke, have a coke. Would you like to hear a joke? Go on, are you ever gonna find the one? And number one is Franklin Shepard Inc. Mutter, 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 mutter. Yes, Jerome, mutter. No, Jerome. Mutter, 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 mutter. That's his lawyer, Jerome. Mutter, 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 mutter. Do it, Jerome. Click sorry, Charlie. Boy Stevie Sondheim sure does love a breakdown number. This song is about a character named Charlie Kringus, who, while on live TV, has a mental breakdown in his relationship with Franklin Shepard, his former best friend and now businessman. Yes, he rages against the new Frank that sits next to him, and how fame has changed him, and how success has made it less about the art and more about commerce. I really don't know what he does, but he makes a ton of money, and a lot of it for me, right? So I think, okay, and I start a play, and he somehow knows, because right away it's brrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr
and it's also just full of jokes, full of little jabs, and just a mean, cynical song about a mean, cynical man. And if you get the right actor to play it, it can really tear your heart out, as well as make you laugh, as well as make you feel a thousand other things. Sondheim is a genius for a reason, and this is honestly one of the best songs ever written, and y'all should check it out. But what do you think? What are your favorite Stephen Sondheim Patter songs? Are there some that didn't make the list? Are there some you wish made the list? Are there some I didn't even think about that you're like, oh, that should have been your number one, why aren't you doing it? Leave them in the comments below. All right, you guys, we'll see you next time on the next Musicals with Cheese Countdown. Don't